until you realize it, it will not work. Hallelujah. Genesis 27 from verse 24. And um, you know, Isaac is here. He's sitting. And Jacob, his son, pretends to be Esau. And um, he, he gets uh, an animal skin from cooperation with his mother. He gets animal skin and puts on his hand. And then uh, pretends and comes to his father. And says, uh, I am Esau. And Isaac, his father, is so old now, doesn't know who's who. But he can still feel something. Jacob was telling lies. He's, he's just making me laugh at him. When I get to heaven, I would like to sit down with him. Ten years with Jacob, just to ask him how he felt when he was lying to his father. Verse 19. And Jacob said unto his father, I am Esau, <laughs> thy firstborn. I have done according as thou obeyest me. Arise, I pray thee, sit and eat of my venison, that thy soul may bless me. And Isaac said unto his son, How is it that thou hast found it so quickly, my son? And he said, Because the Lord thy God brought it to me. <laughs> Jacob, Jacob. And Isaac said unto Jacob, Come near, I pray thee, that I may feel thee, my son, whether thou be my very son Esau or not. Listen, when you start wondering if it's your son, Something's wrong. You've known him all his life. Something was wrong there. All right, watch this now. Verse 22. And Jacob went near unto Isaac, his father, and he felt him and said, the voice of, he says, the voice is Jacob's voice, but the hands are the hands of Esau. Verse 23. And he discerned him not because his hands were hairy as his brother Esau's hands. So he blessed him. And he said, are thou my very son Esau? And he said, I am. And he said, bring it near to me and I will eat of my son's venison that my soul may bless thee. And he brought it near to him, and he did eat, and he brought him wine, and he drank. And his father Isaac said unto him, Come near now and kiss me, my son. You know why he asked him to kiss him? He was still trying to smell him. But the guy was very smart. And his father said unto him, verse 26, Come near now and kiss me, my son. And he came near and kissed him. And he smelled the smell of his remit, <laughs> and blessed him and said, See, the smell of my son is as the smell of a field which the Lord had blessed. Why? He was having animal skin on from the field. But Jacob was not a field man. It was Esau that was the field man. So the father couldn't discern it. Now we go on here. Verse 28. Therefore, now watch the blessing. We're talking about the heritage of Jacob. Watch the blessing here. And I said, this, this now belongs to you in Christ Jesus. He says, if you belong to Christ, you are Abraham's seed. Therefore, God give thee of the dew of heaven. I want you to mark that. And the fatness of the earth and plenty of corn and wine. Let people serve thee. My goodness. Look at this man. Here is a daddy who believes the whole world belongs to him. Not every daddy can talk like that. Isaac was the seed, the physical seed of Abraham. And he knew that God gave the whole world to Abraham. Are you aware of that? God pledged the whole world to a man named Abraham. God said to him, walk through the land and bread of it. It's all yours. The whole world. So his son Isaac knew it. He knew his father owned everything. Now he's blessing his son. He says, let people serve thee. Watch this. Not everybody can say this. You have to have the anointing to know that it belongs to you before you can say it. Let people serve thee and nations bow down to thee. Be Lord over thy brethren, and let thy mother's sons bow down to thee. Listen, Isaac had only one wife. And I want to tell you the significance of what he was saying. He says, be Lord over your brethren. Then he strengthens it further. He says, let your mother's sons bow down to you. Cursed be everyone that cursed thee. Listen, you, you never have to pray about someone who has cursed you. It doesn't mean anything. The moment someone utters a curse against you, the thing starts working on his own life. He says, cursed is everyone that cursed thee. And blessed be he that blessed thee. That was it. And when Esau came and found out that the, the, his brother had been blessed, he said, what about my blessing? The father said, look, I have made him your Lord. How? By the spoken word. And if the heritage of Jacob belongs to you, then understand it. When he says, God give you the dew of heaven, he couldn't say, I give you. He said, God give you. Why? Because the dew of heaven is in the hand of God. What does that represent to you in the New Testament? 
is the power of the Holy Ghost. He says, ask ye of the Lord rain in the time of the latter rain. That's the 10th chapter book of Zechariah. And the Lord shall make bright clouds and give them showers of rain to every one grass in the field. That's the dew of heaven. It's the power of the Holy Ghost. And that has come upon your life. Hallelujah. He says, and the fatness of the earth. What does that mean? He's talking about fruitfulness and material wealth. He's talking about getting the best out of the earth. Because the earth had been cursed. And the curse had been reversed. And now the man says, get the fatness of the earth. Fruitfulness is yours. Everything you put your hand upon to do will turn into success. Material wealth is yours. The fatness of the earth. We're talking about the heritage of Jacob. It belongs to you in Christ Jesus. Plenty of corn and wine. Economic power. In his day, they traded with corn and wine. Hallelujah. They traded with it. Listen, the one who can sell corn and wine must have enough of it to eat and drink. Am I right? He's talking about financial blessing. Plenty of it. You are the supplier. You are running things. Oh my goodness. He is dealing with financial prosperity. Plenty of corn and wine. How did, how did Joseph hold Egypt to, her, to ransom? Corn and wine. He held the whole of Egypt to ransom. Through corn and wine. Before long, the whole world was at his knees. To Joseph, a houseboy. Joseph was a houseboy. He was arrested from the house of Potiphar and put into prison. He was a houseboy in the house of Potiphar. But according to the Bible, why he was a houseboy in the house of Potiphar, the Bible says everything that Joseph did was successful. And everything began to work according to Joseph's design. Until Potiphar was so, he was so touched by it. He knew that God had blessed him because of Joseph. Read it. The Bible says God caused Joseph to prosper. A house boy. I said it doesn't matter who you are. This message is for you. Can you say amen? amen. They put him in the dungeon. But the, the blessing of his father. The heritage of Jacob was working in Joseph. Who was one of the sons of Jacob. He had the heritage of Jacob. The promise of Abraham. No matter where they put you in this world. If you are the seed of Abraham, you will come out victoriously. They may put you in the dungeon. They may forget about you. From prison, he was forgotten. He helped somebody in the prison. The man was released. He said, remember me when you face the king. Remember me. The Bible tells us the man forgot him. For two years, Joseph was forgotten. He was still in prison. Because nobody remembered him. But God stepped into Pharaoh's bedroom one night. Gave him two disturbing dreams and he sent for Joseph. Are you still out there? They may send you away. They'll look for you when the time comes. Because he will put inside you. Actually, he's already done it. There's something inside you. Which nobody else in this world has. Until you show up. I said there's something inside you. Every one of us. Do you realize that over 4 billion people on the face of the earth today. There are no two fingerprints alike in the whole world. No two fingerprints alike. You are unique. One of a kind. God has never had somebody like you. He does not have somebody like you. And he will never have anybody else like you. You are unique. You have come to the world at the right time. Find your place now. Step up now. Stand up now. Hallelujah. Carry the vision now. This is your time. Say amen. amen. The heritage of Jacob is yours. Lastly, he says, let people serve you. Nations will bow before you. And your brethren, he says, be Lord over your brethren. What's he talking about? Your mother's sons. I'm coming to that. What does that mean? He has given the man the dominion. You have the dominion. It's what you say that really counts. You have the dominion. You haven't found out, you will discover. I said you will discover. You will discover. You have the dominion. It's yours. But you say, why is my life like this? That's why we are here. To inform you. To show you what you don't know. Because when you find out, you will wake up and begin to act that way. 
Now he says, let your mother's sons bow down before you. Did you notice he didn't say your father's sons and yet he had only one wife? Why didn't he say let your father's sons bow to you? He says, let your mother's sons. What's he talking about? He's talking about children of the flesh. In other words, in the house of God, we do not dominate one another because you are my father's son. You are my father's daughter. We have only one father. We do not dominate ourselves. There is only one Lord, one heavenly father. So there he's talking about the children of the flesh. So the children of the flesh, he says, do not have the dominion. It doesn't matter how much is in their heads. You are the one with the dominion because you have the heritage of Jacob. I said, you have the heritage of Jacob. The heritage of Jacob is yours. It's yours. I said, it's yours. It's yours. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Wave your hands and, and just bless his name. 